Yeah, I think we can maybe start now, uh, giving the, the time. OK, all right. So um, good morning, everyone. I am <coughs> Wen Yan, Wen Yan Yang. I work in the Division for Inclusive Social Development. Um, very, um, very well, warm welcome to to everybody. Good morning, and uh, if you are participating from somewhere else in a different time zone, uh, uh, good afternoon or, or even good evening. Um, this is um, I'm very um, I'm very honored to moderate this uh, this event. Um, as as you know that. Um, a central commitment promise of the 2030 agenda is to leave no one behind. Um, at the same time, we also know that um, what is not measured doesn't count, or if there's a problem, it won't be addressed. So data that capture the reality and the, the situation of the most marginalized left behind population it's very important to the implementation of the 2030 agenda to realize all the sdgs for all people yet just by the fact that they are marginalized and disadvantaged very often data on those left behind groups are severely lacking so today what what we are going to um have the opportunity to learn about is this uh, initiative um, citizen data. Um, this is a effort to complement and supplement official data on all the other you know data we uh, we we get to monitor progress on SDGs uh, to supplement those data with um, data that come actually from citizen groups and from the grassroots. Um, I personally think, being from the Division for Inclusive Social Development, personally, I think this is a very exciting and very important uh, effort uh, in the uh, in the 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 grant project of uh, realizing sustainable development goals for all people and to, to leave no one behind. Uh, so I. Um, in, in view of time, I just, uh, you know, I, I would just uh, stop here in terms of the introduction of this event. Um, I to 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 put it uh, in a nutshell, I think this is a very important uh, and very timely initiative. And we are very uh, fortunate today to have uh, experts who work uh, in, in the in the uh, the field and from statistical side. Uh, as well as from academic uh, research and, uh, and 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 government uh, um, uh, uh, national level uh, experts to share with us the uh, one I think the 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 concept the idea and the framework uh, by which citizen data is to be uh, to be uh, gathered and and. Um, and systemized, right? And also, we would hear also the example of a particular group that how uh, they engage uh, in this uh, efforts to to collect data from citizens. And then we we'll also hear uh, our colleagues from Colombia uh, uh, to um, how you know what what they are doing at the national level. And also, uh, I just. Um, want to uh, uh, let all participants know that the um, uh, the bio uh, of the expert speakers today are available on the events page. So I would just, uh, um, when I introduce the speakers, I would just say their name and their affiliation, and then we go into presentation right away. And also in terms of the housekeeping, uh, we, we, we will have some time for Q&A, uh, we we lead, we plan for 20 minutes of a Q&A. Uh, uh, so I just uh, as a reminder for our presenters uh, to um, keep to their time of 10 minutes, more or less, um, you know, 13 uh, max, so that we would have time for interactive uh, uh, discussion, and then we'll close it uh, by uh, by 10 o'clock uh, before the official meeting of the Commission for Social Development starts. So with the, uh, those words, uh, I have the pleasure to invite our first speaker, 
uh, Ms. Uh, Yung Yi, uh, who uh, who is, <coughs> excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I have a, a little bit of a um, scratchy, scratchy throat. Um, and uh, she is uh, the uh, chief of SDG monitoring uh, in the United Nations Statistical Office, and she her presentation would uh, uh, would uh, highlight the framework, uh, the Copenhagen framework uh, for citizen data. And uh, very excited to uh, to hear and to learn about this uh, uh, initiative. Yung Yi, you have the you have the mic. Thank you very much, uh, Wen Yan, uh, for the introductions and uh, uh, good day, uh, colleagues. And uh, as uh, uh, Wen Yan mentioned, uh, our public gave uh, you an uh, overview about uh, uh, the Copenhagen framework on citizen data and uh, how why we work on this area and uh, uh, what's the current stage and what's the, the current framework include. Um, so. Uh, uh, without much further ado, and uh, let me just uh, dive in it um, on this. Yeah. And um, so the the according to the latest uh, Sustainable Development Goals report 2023, uh, uh, on the assessment of the global progress on the SDGs, giving us a very gloomy pictures. And uh, only 15% of the target accessed uh, on a check. Um, to reach uh, the uh, 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 the target, and about half the target are moderate and severe off track. And more worryingly, is one over one third have either uh, seen no movement or regress uh, uh, below the 2015 and baseline years. And so, based on this uh, uh, this uh, progress. Um, the UN organizes the SDG summit uh, in September 2023. And during the civil society organization uh, section, the Secretary General emphasized that rescue the global goals will not be possible uh, without the leadership and action of the civil society. So um, he encouraged uh, women, youth, indigenous community, and other groups to read their voice and urgent actions to secure a sustainable uh, planet. And, and uh, he also emphasizes that SDG is about people and uh, discriminations and also uh, keeps SDG from not, not being implemented. Therefore, he asked the strong engagement and participation of uh, a civil society organization and the citizens. Uh, as Winnie mentioned, uh, the importance of citizen general data. So, with less than seven years remaining to achieve the SDGs, uh, the lack of inclusive data uh, pose a significant uh, obstacle to realize uh, leaving no, no one behind the overarching uh, as aspiration of the 2030 agenda. So, uh, through uh, citizen general data, um, we want to empower citizens to be the agencies of change. Citizen generated data also can enhance the data availability, timeliness and also quality, openness and inclusiveness of, of data, and also provide a valuable insight, particularly for the marginalized uh, uh, populations. And so the, uh, looking at the data availability at the global level, uh, so we, we see uh, there's still uh, significant gap in terms of geographic coverage, timeliness, and disaggregation. Um, and this is a, a picture uh, of assess the data availability uh, across all the 17 goals in the global SDG database. And so oh, you can see for uh, several cross-cutting goals, such as climate change, gender equality, uh, and uh, um, peace justice uh, institution goal 16, Less than half of the 193 country or area have international compared data uh, since uh, 2015. And as stated in the 2030 agenda, the SDG follow up and review process uh, at all levels should be open, inclusive, and participatory, and thus also transparent for all people, and will support uh, the reporting uh, by all relevant stakeholders. 
So national review should draw on the contribution uh, from indigenous people, civil society, and the private sector and other stakeholders. So we, we hope um, that engaging citizen civil society and community-based organizations in the SDG monitor can ensure that the view of all people, uh, particularly the vulnerable and the marginalized population group uh, who are at, at risk of discrimination are uh, represented. Um, uh, citizen general data, uh, when properly collected and utilized, uh, can uh, and help enhance the relevance, reduce respondent burden, and increase efficiency and produce more timely and disaggregate statistics. So let me give you some example of the citizen generated data. Um, in Brazil, uh, this is indigenous uh, uh, populations and uh, civil society organization. They record the deaths of uh, children from disease that could have been treated with adequate access to health care. They provide uh, the evidence on problems that overlooked by the, the official state uh, statistic uh, and to protect the indigenous population. And in India, uh, so marginalized communities uh, collect data to assess the level of living standard, access to the basic services, and show, showing the larger discrepancies and differences in of different communities in 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 terms of access to service, and uh, provided their real reality where the the help uh, service are needed. Um, also in Kenya, uh, the National Commission for Human Rights uh, collaborated with the civil society organization to uh, collect data on the situation of human rights uh, uh, defenders and feeding to directly to the national monitoring of SDG uh, indicator 16.10.1. Um, and so we, uh, the UN and organized uh, a, a expert group on the citizen and data, I think is starting this work back in 2022. 20, uh, and uh, uh, we try to uh, set up a framework so country can work together. Uh, uh, the initial framework uh, try to focus uh, a little bit narrow, and, um, and then we would like to expand when um, the work grow because at the beginning we want to focus uh, our uh, limited resources uh, to only uh, uh, like uh, the beginning of the uh, data value chain, how citizen um, can contribute to data. So based on this. Uh, we want to uh, present a, a little bit about the citizen, uh, the Copenhagen framework of our uh, citizen data. Uh, the, the name come from because we had our last uh, uh, expert group in, in Copenhagen and the meeting and, and uh, attended by uh, uh, civil society organization, national civic office, international organization and human rights institution. So based on the uh, the expert group, uh, we came up uh, the, this Copenhagen framework on citizen data. Uh, the important things is uh, is on the definition. At least at this stage, we would like to focus uh, on uh, to define the citizen data to be guided by the set of principle and defined as the data originated from initiative where citizen either are initiated or sufficiently engaged. Uh, uh, as a minimum in the design and all the collection stage of the data value chains and uh, uh, in respect of uh, whether the data are integrated into official statistics. So the case fact of the definition include the two elements. Uh, first one is the sufficient engagement of citizen data. And the second is a stage of, of what, where the, the citizen can contribute to the data. Uh, it's, here we want to only focus on the design and the collection stage, and later we probably will want to include a, a more broader stage, such as the use of the data by citizens. Mm. And the, the, the uh, Copenhagen framework uh, um, also lists a, a set of the key principles of citizen data, so I'm not going to do, go detail, but just name a few. Uh, this uh, uh, one of the uh, principle is independence. It's free of any unwanted political pressure. It should be really relevant 
um, uh, the data collect directly responded to the issue identified or valued by the citizens or the organization um, represent them. And it need to meet the professional standard and uh, uh, also uh, relevant to uh, uh, data security. And we also want to um, emphasize the uh, self-definition and the self-identification. So population of interest should be self-defined and the personal identity and the characteristic should be as assigned to individuals through self-identification um, and the transparency, ethical and safe production use, confidentiality, privacy, and data attribution. And just uh, name a, a few, so I'm not going to list all uh, of the uh, 10 principles that we shared about the, the uh, framework. And uh, uh, we also uh, uh, included the enabling environment in the document. Um, the, uh, this also need a whole society approach to data and the emphasis is a human cat capital. Basically, they need the technical skill and the knowledge for the production of the fit for purpose of citizen data and its use uh, uh, important um, for all stakeholders. And uh, for the environment, they also need to build the trust um, among all stakeholders uh, for a robust uh, data ecosystem and uh, have uh, laws and regulation uh, to uh, enable uh, this uh, um, address the data privacy, ownership, and control the data collection from citizens, and, and provide the right to data governance mechanism and the institutional arrangement. Um, and just also, uh, there's a data quality assurance and funding requirement. This is a part of the data enabling environment uh, for citizen data. Uh, we also include a roadmap for the implementation of this uh, um, uh, framework. So this is a, a roadmap uh, to implementation uh, the framework. And back, uh, as I mentioned, in Copenhagen in September 23, the expert group uh, reviewed and uh, then prepared the draft of the framework and the set up of the principles and uh, the enabling environment uh, and also set up as a road uh, implementation. So oh, in, in the coming months, the UN Statistical Commission uh, will have its 55th session. So we want to uh, present this Copenhagen framework uh, uh, to the official statistical community and, uh, and then get their view. Throughout uh, 2024, um, so we would like to develop the case studies and also um, uh, like uh, have a, a global consultation on this framework and uh, get input from all stakeholders um, on, on the uh, framework and reach out uh, to uh, civil society major groups and other stakeholder uh, um, for, uh, to uh, include their needs and the views in the process. Uh, we hope to have uh, a expert group meeting in June 2024 and uh, um, to review the, uh, the Copenhagen framework and the, uh, also the result from the case studies and uh, to validate uh, the framework. And uh, um, in the coming years, uh, we would like to develop a, a citizen data guidance and uh, also uh, a plotting guidelines uh, in countries uh, provide uh, capacity building to both uh, the CSOs and, and as, as NSOs and, uh, and uh, develop uh, a national roadmap on citizen general data in selected piloting countries. Um, and finally, in March 2025, we would like to present uh, uh, the finalized the like, uh, framework uh, to the official statistical community of the UN Statistical Commission in the next session uh, for, for uh, their uh, adoptions. So this is a, a basically uh, a framework on the citizen general data. Uh, we also uh, uh, created a collaborate on citizen data. This is a, a collaborative community, including uh, 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 civil society organization, national statistical office, human rights institution, academia, regional and international organization. 
Um, the first the job of this collaborator is to develop and finalize the Copenhagen framework on citizen data. And uh, the uh, collaborator also want to provide a space for sharing knowledge, resources, and experience in addressing key challenges and topics that have been discussed, um, and such as concept definition, data quality, ethics, and also area for capacity development and, and the sustainability, and also those will be identified as a carbon, uh, the collaborative progress. Also, the shared experience and case study should also cover uh, those operates at a different scale from local community and to global level. The collaborator also foster uh, collaboration and uh, in depth and discussion among experts from different communities. And the collaborator also provide a platform for advocacy and the mobilization of relevant and, and uh, stakeholders around the topic and to promote uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the importance and use of the citizen data. And lastly, but not least, we want to identify spe specific uh, conceptual and methodology gaps and uh, inform further development of guidance based on the ongoing research and experiences gathered during the existing and ongoing um, collaborative discussions. Um, so uh, given that, uh, we would like to hear uh, your uh, voice. Um, so. I think we already shared the, the uh, framework in the chat. Uh, this is available as a background document to the uh, Statistical Commission. And we'd like to have your uh, input. So I put uh, the uh, uh, survey form in, in this uh, link. And we would like to also work with countries and the CSOs to test and pilot the framework. If you're interested, and please send the email to citizen.data at un.org. And we also would like to invite you to join the couple of information and consultation session and during the Statistical Commission. The first one is a virtual event the next week um, on citizen data, um, on the site event of the UN Statistical Commission. And uh, the second, if you are happy in, to be in New York, we would like to invite you uh, to an in-person event on the 26th of February. So, so I should also share the link uh, to the uh, two uh, uh, events. And uh, uh, if you would like to follow us, and you can also uh, email the citizen data at UN.org uh, to register for our uh, newsletters. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention, and back to you, uh, Wen Yi. Uh, you're muted. Sorry, I um okay now you can hear me right. So thank you so much. This very informative uh, uh, introduction of the Copenhagen framework. I think it really. I I personally I will sign up uh, to your newsletter and and follow developments. Um, and I think that I I take particularly to heart the 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 uh, you know the the work of the. Uh, the collaborative and also the working group to, uh, you know, what the Copenhagen framework tries to define. I think those are very important issues. Uh, and I, I think that um, we, our uh, uh, speakers, um, uh, our next speakers uh, will uh, bring some uh, further kind of uh, flesh to enrich the, the framework and what you introduce is, is really very, very interesting and very informative. Uh, so now I would uh, turn the mic over to um, Andre Gossman, who is advisor in the National Administrative Department of Statistics of Colombia. Uh, Andres, you have the you have the floor. So, do we have a technical issue, or let me then 
let me give the floor if Andres is for whatever reason is not able to 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 speak up. Uh, I will give the floor to um, uh, Victor. Um, oh no, oh, I'm I'm sorry, uh, Victor uh, Adrevalo Capri uh, Capri Cabra who is the head of SDG unit in the National Administrative Department of Statistics in Colombia. Victor. Um, can, can anybody uh, from the, the technical side find out what, um, do we have a, a connection issue? I, I saw Victor before uh, on the screen. Yeah, I th I thought I also saw Victor's uh, name. Uh, um, let me see. Then, in the interest of time, I can think, I? Yeah, oh, just I. He's. Um, uh, yeah, we need to give his permission. Sorry. Uh, let oh, me just okay. make a presenter. Sorry. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Thanks very much uh, for your okay. time. Do you listen to me now? Yeah, okay. I can yes. hear you now. Awesome. Andres, right? Yes, uh, it's okay. Andres, but don't worry, Wen Yan. Thank you very okay. much. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. I just share my screen quickly with you. Uh, yes, I was having some... I'm, I'm still not able to share um, the presentation. I just can't speak and probably you can see me, okay. but... Yeah, let me book. see if I can give you the right. Sorry, Thank you, um, Young Ming. Don't worry. Uh, just one second, okay. Um, yeah, now I think you should be able to yes. share. Thank you very much. And once again, sorry with all the participants and thanks for your time uh, waiting. So uh, I will uh, heading this presentation in company with Victor, which is the, the director of the SDG. I think it's not now connected now, but anyway, if he, oh yeah, I think it is now there. Hi, Victor. Um, so yeah, thanks you very much and good morning. And I head up to, for Victor for the beginning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us here in this event. And we talk today a very lead, little bit about um, Colombia's um, roadmap to try to implement some of the initiatives that we discussed last September in Copenhagen. Uh, in the first place, um, Yongi mentioned previously some of the key aspects of the Copenhagen framework. I don't wanna um, stop here. So it's very important to take into account uh, the need to have some um, case studies and some pilot projects to, to analyze and to have more evidence on how we can use this data for the countries that we don't have the enough experience, the sufficient experience to, to implement this kind of um, in data. So I think it's important to highlight that. Um, next slide, please, Andres. Uh, so based on the insights that we received from that framework, um, we have some additional motivations for our own situation in the country, especially in the National Statistical Office of Colombia, DANE. So the first is the um, some current data sources uh, fail to establish full information for certain communities in the country, for example, for indigenous groups, or for peace and communities, we don't have uh, the whole uh, landscape for the situation of that of those communities. So in that sense, it's important for us to get more uh, data sources and, and reliable data for, uh, sources. The second is the importance that the citizens are involved in every part of the statistical production in order um, to get um, more contact with them, but uh, to receive the feedback and this in order to improve the quality products that Dane produce. Of course, we have a quality framework 
um, for the statistical production, but we think the civil society participation in that could bring more uh, quality products and more products connect with the uh, needs of the people. And the last uh, motivation is the need to integrate the information of these um, minorities in the official statistical production. Next slide. Uh, you have the floor, Andres. Thank you, Victor. Uh, so just to, to also get, give some context, uh, this topic is as important for us uh, as it is, is as stated in our national statistical planning. So it's part of uh, our objectives in terms of four years from 2023 to 2027, and it's about this preparation and this uh, defining of documents and recommendations, practices, guidelines, and mechanisms for engaging uh, society and citizens into the all the value chain and all the, pro uh, the production of uh, statistical information in Colombia. This at the end gives some uh, legit legitimacy and some support for uh, having this, uh, this process integrated into the whole action of what the statistical office do and even the national statistical system. So this translates actually into different, different goals of our national statistical plan that are related or takes information from citizens, especially from the indigenous and rural communities through different strategies. So you have uh, some things, things like ethnic registries, something like the creation of why information system, which is a specific indigenous community in Colombia. Uh, we have the collaboration with their own communities to have their, their own census lists. Uh, and we have the, 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 the importance of, re, of establishing relations with these delegates. So it's about also considering the different things that the framework uh, establishes in terms of the levels of citizen participation, the stages of data value chains that citizens are engaged, and the types of initiatives for data collection. We have some special uh, design of our national statistical planning system, which is the uh, a technical advisory council of the national statistical system, which is composed itself of uh, members of society. So it's actually uh, a, a kind of engagement of society at a high level where they, where they can um, suggest and advise and strategize about the statistical production process. And there are experts in different topics in five different uh, the, the, the groupings. And there are some uh, research lines related to this citizen data in terms of this statistical uh, uh, advisory council. The ethnic approach with intersectionality, which is very important in a country like Colombia, where we have several communities uh, related uh, to our uh, past history. Uh, we have also a transversality of differential and international approach, which takes about these intersectional uh, differences and approaches that can be taken in terms of gender, uh, ethnic, uh, rural, and also that can get, can get uh, aligned align with the citizen uh, priorities. We have also a really good example of gender violence and a, a really clear line of uh, investing about gender violence and also about the LGTBIQ population registry, which is also something that will uh, be to share uh, additionally forward. So, Victor, back to you. Thank you, Andres. So uh, we have some uh, mechanisms um, thinking in the possibility to implement these ideas and these um, pilot projects to achieve the objective that Andres explains previously. The first is the South-South uh, cooperation. Uh, we have some different strategies and in this moment we have a um, cooperation agreement with Kenya, Ghana and Uganda to share information about CGD and the intersectional uh, data that uh, Dane and Colombia produce. Uh, of course, we are very involved in the collaborative. It's a strategy that we think it's very important and is uh, the first step in order to achieve the goals of the uh, Copenhagen framework. Um, the other one is the creation of the um, interdisciplinary base group in Dane only uh, thinking in how we can implement this, these studies that Andres mentioned and the articulation with the different uh, actors 
uh, in Dane to implement uh, citizen generated data projects. The idea of this group is have a, a document to give the, the main um, actions in the institution to use citizen generated data. And of course, it's very important for us, the approaches with citizens. I mentioned this in the, in the roadmap that, you, that we have defined for this, but it is important. Uh, we mentioned this in Copenhagen uh, too, is the need to have some kind of mapping of the different actors, actors in academia, actors in civil society organization or in other national institutions that uh, have the will to participate in this. Uh, next, please, Andres. So, um, for example, in our case, we have done some uh, initial, initially uh, pilot projects uh, to work with citizen generated data. Two of these projects are um, related to the App Diversa app, uh, application. We um, developed this application last year, uh, trying to measure the indicator 16.B.1. And based on the experience of our colleagues from Ghana, we want to uh, measure the indicator 16.6.2. That's one of the reasons why we uh, want to have a more uh, close um, exchange of information with our colleagues from Ghana. And that's the, the reason that we create this cooperation agreement with them. Um, next, please. The idea of this uh, pilot project is to that in Dane we have some preliminary results in the World Data Forum in that um, will be carried out in managing in November. So for the actions that Colombia has for this uh, initiative, the idea is to um, have two parts. Uh, one is a cross-cutting process, and the other is the identification and conceptualization. First is the review of literature and uh, analyze and collect the best international practices, including, of course, the insight of the framework. The next one is uh, try to involve in working groups related with, with this subject, with this topic, and the um, possibility to work together with civil society organization is one of the parts that we have thought that this year we can carry out in Colombia. And of course, it's important to define the data value change for citizen generated data. This is very important and this is one of the parts of the creation of, of this um, regulatory uh, framework that Andres mentioned. Of course, I mentioned uh, to the, the need to the identification of uh, to different ecosystem actors, and that's one of the actions that we carry out this year. Uh, related to the cross-cutting process, uh, it is important for us the data quality assurance. That's one of the reasons we. Uh, want to integrate the statistical ethics system of DANE in this, in this project, and of course, to promote uh, the different pilot projects in the CASEN. Um, I think that's all for, uh, from our part. I don't know if maybe Andres, you want to add something? If not, no. thank you. Thank you very much, Victor. Yes, at the end, the objective is to have this integration of this valuable knowledge that the Copenhagen framework represents to us, to have uh, an integrated approach, to have this adaptation for the Colombian context in, in realizing that every single context has its own uh, specific needs. So it's our, our best interest to continue learning about the framework and about the experiences of other countries in order to improve our own development. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Andres. Uh, this is a very, very interesting. Uh, look forward to hearing more about your project. Uh, without further ado, now I turn to Ms. 
Song, Song A Chong, who is a professor and director of the Information Systems and Informatics program at CUNY College of Staten Island, and she's a member of the NGO Committee on Migration. So we'll hear from Professor Chong, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, group of who often um, left out a uh, group of people that's migrants. Professor Chong, you have the mic. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, glad to be here. Uh, let me share my slides first. OK, uh, am I having a background? Share content. OK, so how do I share this? <laughs> OK, uh, add background and windows. OK, got it. Uh, which one is it? OK, let me see. All right, can you see my slide? Yes, we can. OK, great. So um, uh, nice to meet you, everybody. And then thank you for attending this uh, side event, uh, which is a, a great initiative for uh, the uh, citizens generated uh, data. So uh, today, uh, this one is the project that I have been working uh, in uh, 2018 to 2020 uh, with a col in collaboration with the uh, uh, Rutgers team, uh, as well as uh, uh, NGO Committee on Migration uh, team, as well as their you know, board members. Um, so the, uh, as you know, migration is, uh, uh, you know, a global phenomenon, and that is 3.5% uh, at that time uh, of 2019. When we were measuring, it was 3.5% uh, of the global population is involved in the migration or refugee status. And uh, uh, it uh, accounts to uh, approximately 272 million in 2019. And the uh, current, uh, you know, uh, statistics uh, will uh, measure much more according to the MPI, the Migration Policy Institute. Institute. So there are many reasons why this uh, migration uh, is, uh, uh, you know, uh, happening. Is uh, many reasons, of course, uh, people are seeking for security, prosperity, and stability. And uh, you know, they have uh, different reasons why they are uh, making this uh, kind of. Uh, 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 activities. Uh, so um, there was a uh, 2019. There was a global pact for the migration mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, representative of uh, all the government uh, representatives uh, gathered together, and then they want to, uh, you know, achieve this uh, UN uh, SDG, the uh, Sustainable Development Goal 10, which is reducing inequality. And one of their uh, target uh, area is responsible and well managed migration policies. And uh, they want to do, uh, you know, protect human rights of all migrants and reduce forced, you know, migration, in, improve migration management, enhance the, you know, safety of migration. Um, and uh, in addition uh, to this uh, government uh, global pact and or in tandem or to, to support that uh, effort. Uh, NGO uh, com Committee on Migration uh, is uh, a kind of uh, uh, non-profit uh, organizations, non-governmental organizations uh, uh, worldwide uh, uh, has uh, their own, uh, you know, way of um, uh, have a memberships already, members of conference on NGO. Uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, automated somehow. NGO in consult. Uh, consultative co uh, relationship with the U UN, and they are working toward this goal to manage, uh, you know, and provide uh, some kind of uh, uh, good understanding of uh, what the NGOs' activities are. But in order to do that, uh, they had to face this uh, uh, challenge. Uh, there are many NGOs working for the migra migrants and the refugees, but uh, you know they they want to have more evidence-based decision making on migration issues. And uh, they face the challenge of uh, lacking the visibility of what organizations are working where and how many projects are they involved in. Uh, that is a big problem, but uh, knowing that will facilitate the, you know, the situation awareness of all um, uh, organizations. And then they may be able to collaborate together in different uh, activities. 
and uh, so that is one uh, issue. And another one is the lack of uh, visibility of migrant related, directly related issues. So the migrant characteristics such as uh, demographic information and then how are they, you know, are they, uh, their, their, their distribution of migrant populations in different regions and uh, where are they coming from, where are they going and uh, the, uh, the, what kind of challenges they have uh, faced in the, their destination, uh, you know, uh, countries and what kind of skill sets do they coming uh, with. So those are very essential for uh, successful governance on their support, uh, you know, uh, policies, uh, you know. Uh, that is uh, another challenge. They don't have that kind of information uh, very well for the NG NGO uh, co committee on uh, migrants, uh, you know. And another one is lack of sharing collaboration among NGO activities. So it's uh, hard to prioritize and evaluate their practices uh, that are in alignment with the, uh, you know, SDG objectives on the on that. So this uh, all become a challenge, and they want to know. Uh, data gathering is uh, uh, a way to go. So uh, they, uh, what they have uh, done uh, the, uh, to um, gathering the, uh, the data, the instrument they, they used is a uh, survey and they designed the survey and then uh, collect the data from these uh, work, uh, working organizations for uh, migrants and, uh, and then uh, this data that collected has to be somehow uh, cleaned and then integrated. So there is a lot of uh, pre-processing we have to do. Uh, and then uh, uh, data modeling and the database development. This is an uh, important uh, conceptual organization of the data that we are gathering for the future purposes as well. This is not just a one time uh, kind of survey, but rather we would like to repeat this one annually or monthly and so on. So get we have a more uh, sort of a, a near real time uh, situation awareness. And then uh, using those data and data models, we will be able to do some kind of analytics uh, that we can provide for these uh, NGOs and they will get an information and insights on the organization, the reasons of migration and the, all that, uh, uh, you know, migrant information as well as the project related uh, information. So that is what we've been involved in this pipeline, except this, uh, you know, data uh, gathering and the uh, 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 part, but then we had a feedback loop uh, saying that uh, what kind of data needs to be uh, augmenting. So they were developing the next stage of uh, you know uh, surveys and so on. So we would like to walk through this uh, you know data collection process and what kind of data they have actually uh, collected, and that may uh, give you some insight. Even though it is not directly citizens themselves are not uh, you know collecting it, but it is a uh, driven by the, you know, the survey, uh, you know, prompt, let's put it this way. So they are inducing the citizen uh, or migrant data using this kind of uh, survey uh, uh, of the NGO organizations. So it's not a direct, you know, uh, data, but uh, it's a sort of a, uh, induced, you know, data for uh, migrant uh, management. So. So there was a 16 questions and uh, 74 NGOs uh, involved and then the survey questions related to organization information, project information, what kind of projects do they provide or, or services if you want to call it, and then uh, migrant information. Those are three big uh, chunk of them. We'll just go through those, uh, you know, 16 questions quickly so that uh, you will uh, probably get some better idea and then how we utilize the how we uh, manage this one to get some uh, important uh, insights. Uh, so those are countries of organization. Where are they operating currently and then um, and where are they uh, located? And uh, brief descri description of their local projects. So how many, uh, you know, staff members do they work on uh, each project? And then, uh, what is the source mm -hmm. of their funding? That is also important for NGOs, right? It can be community-based, foundation-based, and so on. And uh, a number of migrants that they are serving in the local projects, and then uh, countries that uh, of origin of migrants socioeconomic levels of migrants as well as ethnicity or religion of migrants. And then uh, they also talk about majority of populations that they serve. Is it uh, children, 
in different age groups or is it adult or you know with men and women or whole family and so on and then the migrants and refugees they serve is internal migrants or whether it's international migrants okay so and uh, continuing and there are reasons why the population uh, uh, left their original country so there may be uh, different reasons and then these are multiple uh, you know uh, things that they can uh, choose like uh, conflict or violence or discrimination poverty lack of decent work or environment degradation and so on and then drug and smuggling uh, issues and education better education they want to have and better quality of jobs that they want to look for so those are some of the you know uh, uh, areas and then the uh, migrants uh, you serve experience some kind of in the destination kind uh, uh, countries what kind of intolerance and uh, xenophobic uh, experience do they uh, face? Okay, so that is employment related uh, issues or housing related discrimination or, uh, you know, uh, health services, they have the difficulties and so on. So those are the kind of things we would like to find out. And then describe, uh, you know, uh, successful pro uh, and promising pra practices or best practices they have uh, organized and uh, uh, worked very well. So those are sort of good cases that uh, you know these NGOs can uh, actually uh, uh, replicate perhaps. Okay, so and then uh, partnerships with the local authorities and then governmental uh, you know entities. Uh, are they working closely or or in against you know in uh, conflicts with them and so on. And then um, challenges of their organizations facing and protecting the migrants, uh, uh, especially the victims of xenophobic and uh, intol intolerance uh, cases. So there are many cases like uh, legal barriers. Uh, there is uh, no laws uh, uh, regarding um, uh, protection of these uh, uh, migrants or refugees or barriers at the government level, such as bureaucratic delays and lack of training and corruption. So, so training in the sensitivity is lacking in certain countries, and that's normal, you know, from their point of view, but it's not acceptable. And discrimination, lack of access of services and so on. Uh, uh, so these are some, uh, you know, uh, uh, 16 uh, questions I walked through with you, and those the data was uh, in, uh, as you know, some of them are multiple, you know, selections, and some of them are, you know, descriptive and uh, natural language, uh, right? Instead of uh, very structured data, and uh, often that citizen data is not necessarily, you know, clean data like a transaction data in a supermarket, and these things are quite, uh, you know, structured, and it's easy to. Uh, have the machines or algorithms uh, to go through that data, but that data needs uh, some kind of cleaning and organization. That's what where we uh, uh, computer scientists as well as data scientists uh, came into, uh, uh, you know, uh, to support this uh, um, to processing this data. So uh, we had a uh, built, uh, you know, related data uh, background, uh, you know, how to organize that. So it's uh, based on the organization projects and migrants and uh, all that associated information that we have extracted from the data. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, work has been uh, going on in order to build this kind of related data. And then once the data is being built and then stored in an organized manner, it's easier to do the uh, analytics. So based on that, I want to walk through you uh, with uh, a couple of uh, you know analytics, uh, you know, so that uh, probably you might have uh, seen this kind of uh, visualization uh, that uh, gives you immediate you know uh, uh, you know uh, understanding of uh, where these organizations are currently operating and who are they, you know. So these are some of the geographically uh, distributed organizations working uh, at. And there is a, a list of them, list format, and then uh, where, uh, their organization uh, informations, and then uh, uh, what, what kind of partnership do they have? Okay, so you can go through each one of them, and then you can drill into it. Uh, you know, it's uh, Canada. They have a, a couple of uh, you know organizations working. Uh, it's the uh, uh, name and uh, you know uh, partnership informations are, are available over here, and then. Uh, 
uh, in addition to, you know, organization, what kind of projects are they involved in uh, each organization? So there may be several, uh, you know, uh, uh, projects are going on in Australia, in America, and so on. So there is a project related information over here, and you can select a particular uh, country if you are interested in that will be listing what projects are being uh, currently going on. And then uh, migrant uh, information, how many migrants okay. there are in uh, uh, that uh, by the organization. And then as you can see, some of these uh, uh, organization is providing, uh, 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 dealing with a lot of migrants over there. So you can uh, also uh, look at the, uh, by the organization, uh, you will see uh, where they are operating as well. And if you, uh, you know, click on one organization, let's say this gray one, and then it'll give you where they are operating, which country, and what kind of uh, organization uh, uh, code they have, uh, what kind of migrants are they dealing with, the, 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 are they um, uh, professional uh, migrants only, or skilled, or, or unskilled, or other kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, migrants they are managing or uh, serving, okay? Uh, and then uh, best practices, you will be able to show uh, different kind of uh, best practices, uh, awareness uh, of uh, migrant issues and uh, community outreach or, you know, consultation, education services, housing uh, services projects. So those are best practices they reported uh, by NGO what was uh, working for them. And these are, you can drill down into, and then what organization has been working on awareness. So you can click on that one and you will be able to see that. Then uh, reasons of migration, of course, that's a very important. And then there are a whole set of them uh, being gathered from the, you know, uh, survey. One of them is the conflict and uh, violence reasons they are migrating away and discrimination uh, and poverty, lack of this work, environmental uh, degradation, drug issues. So the, the ones that we uh, saw in the choices in the survey can be uh, uh, dissected and then you can have across different uh, organizations uh, how many of them are actually fleeing their country because of certain reasons. And then migrants by ethnicity and religions, you will be able to see ethnicity, different types of, uh, uh, you know, countries or uh, eth ethnic groups. And then by religion, you will be able to uh, uh, look at it, the uh, origin, uh, who are uh, the origins of uh, some of these uh, Africans, uh, you know, coming from, and then uh, uh, where are they going, those uh, being, uh, shown there. And then we can also show the intolerance and xenophobic uh, experiences that uh, was being reported about uh, migrants in the destination. And then uh, it's employment related uh, issues were highest and then inclusion in the life of uh, uh, the uh, destination uh, community, uh, you know, and then housing issues, social services. Uh, so those can be also drill down into education level and then you can basically visually uh, see which countries are having, uh, you know, migrants uh, suffering from uh, education uh, issues or employment dis uh, discrimination and all the organizations that are working on this particular area can be also uh, shown by organization uh, they are dealing with uh, this uh, migrant. Sorry, yes. Professor Chan, probably you are coming to your uh, wrap up, yes. but just to remind that uh, yes. uh, uh, if you can wrap up quickly, then we sure. move on to the next presentation and leave some time for Q&A. Thanks. Of course, yeah. So uh, this one is uh, so basically you are uh, looking at these uh, challenges that uh, also uh, that migrants are uh, suffering from. It can be visualized and then uh, funding types over here. Uh, community-based and religion-based and so on. So in conclusion, <laughs> 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 we can uh, collect and utilize, uh, you know, quite uh, accurate and uh, uh, data uh, that was the uh, intention, you know, to provide uh, situation awareness for NGOs to make uh, their own uh, activities organized, the services that they have to prioritize uh, that can be, uh, you know, uh, made and then uh, it gives uh, all the you know uh, NGOs are working and what projects do they have 
that really allows evidence-based policy making and engage in well-informed public discourse and then that uh, is uh, the, the target uh, SDG uh, 10 uh, point seven migration management objective can be improved. OK, so that is, uh, you know, the project we've been working on. And then the, there was a discussion of uh, uh, designing a new survey, which uh, during the COVID it has uh, uh, happened. And I, I heard about that there is a new survey results coming up. OK, thank you. Thank you, Professor Chong, for this very interesting um, presentation. And I, uh, I I really look forward to hearing more about the the outcome of your your research and, and your future research um, on this very important uh, group. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and especially as globalization intensifies, we you know, we we see more and more international migration happening. Um, so uh, now um, I have the pleasure to uh, invite uh, uh, Shika Shreta, who is the country project implementation lead of uh, VSO International Nepal. Uh, Ms. Uh, Shika, you have the, the mic uh, to, to make your presentation. I'm trying to uh, just share my screen. Has it come now? Yes, we can see your your uh, presentation. Okay, so I'm just uh, starting my presentation with a quote: "In God we trust, but for all others we really need a data." From the uh, Dr. Stan Dino. Uh, uh, so in this group, uh, definitely I do not need to elaborate more on the importance of the citizen-generated data, and that also in promoting the social justice, we cannot deny the importance of the citizen-generated data. What are the data generally we provide? We provide the, uh, I'm just focusing much more from the gender equality lens. We provide the information on the male literacy is 83.6 percentage, while female literacy is 69.4. Only 8 percentage of women own a house. One third representation of women in national and provincial parliaments, whereas 40.8 percentage in local government. Proportions of decision making uh, positions held by women still very low. Uh, internet use of women, 75% uh, of 90, 75% uh, against 90% of the young boys. O only 50% of the married women can participate in the decision that matters their life. But still, do we have the data to understand the intersectionality? We cannot generalize all women are same. Even the women are different, but do we really have the data to understand the differences between the same uh, categories? who have the access and the control uh, over the data design, who, uh, who designs the methodology, who, who is responsible for defining the approaches, who sets the standards, who are involved in determining the benchmark, who have the access to the data, who controls the availability of the data resources, and who interprets the data, and who is holding concerned authority to account based on those interpretation. Definitely the people who are in power have all these access to all this control over the data and civil society organizations are still far behind in the data politics and LNOB the initiative is also of one of the good learning uh, hosted by the ICSC where we all the civil society organizations come together to ensure that people who are marginalized are in the drivers of the data collection. In terms of our uh, case, we are collecting information on the uh, access to education by girls and children with disability and marginalized communities, along with education in emergencies, status on ch child marriage, gender-based violence, harmful social practices, including discrimination based on gender and caste, and participation in decision making and accessibility in public services. And for this, we uh, mostly use community scorecard. That is one of the uh, most recognized social accountability tools. Uh, in terms of the SDG5 monitoring, uh, we found uh, uh, that uh, most of the right holders keep uh, uh, keep uh, thinking that the status is very low. However, the duty bearers think that the status is higher. So this also creates the conflict between the right holders and the duty bearers. 
However, the interface meeting is the platform where we bring all both the right holders and the duty bearers into the consensus on defining what is the status and what should be the future plan. And when we, uh, uh, based on those consensus, we also prepare the um, uh, action plan. To implement uh, those action plan, it's not only the responsibility of the state or it's not the only responsibility of the right holders or the civil society organization. It should be the joint responsibility. Now we have found that uh, if uh, these, in, uh, these cases of engaging the people in data collection has also empowered them and ha have also made them realize that they also need to put a bit of the efforts in increasing their own livelihood or dignified living and also made uh, duty bearers accountable. We can see from this chart where the participation of the marginalized communities has also increased. And also the access to the family planning for adults it has also increased and we also uh, do this in uh, we also analyze this process in the annual basis and the action plan is not developed only by the civil society or only by the state it's developed by the joint uh, process so the joint accountability and joint ownership in this uh, process uh, is also ensured some of the other major findings is definitely the discrimination among boys and girls is higher in education and there is low progress in developing disability friendly infrastructure. There is also discrepancies in the ways uh, payment uh, between men and women. The proportion of seat, uh, as we shared, the women in local government is found good, moderate in provincial and the national uh, parliament, but still more to be done in terms of the meaningful engagement. Economic empowerment, uh, especially for the uh, person with disability is very low. Uh, there is also low awareness on community and school on the adaptation plans and their practice, and the proportion of the school covered by the climate change education is still very low. And the number, uh, as I said earlier, the number of decision making positions are not uh, uh, taken still by the marginalized youth groups, and they are still far behind in the political and government structure. The number of uh, public and private organizations align, uh, aligning the gender responsive budget in the regular planning and budget seems promising, but we really need uh, the, the gender responsive budget thing is done, but the implementation needs further improvement. Uh, all these citizen generated data also helps in uh, at times quantifying the qualitative perspective of the different marginalized people. So it helps in promoting the social justice first, the voices are heard in terms of the data generation and in terms of designing the data processing and also use that as the evidence for advocacy, advocating for the recognition for their one uh, ideological recognition as well as address their one concerns and also provide the platform to collaborate with different networks like the LNOB, where we are all different organizations com to coming together to this common cause and also making voice count so that there are different platforms like in our case, we are having volunteer national review and also um, uh, that will also be the platform where we can use this uh, information raised uh, and collected in the joint ownership. Some of the challenges, yes, uh, the uh, we still have a uh, lack of the standard format and process for data collection and analysis that creates the issue of data rela uh, data reliability and the uh, the. Uh, the current uh, uh, context of the Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen framework of the citizen generated data really uh, helps in making the clear on the uh, standard that is accepted both by the state as well as by the civil society so that there is no question on the data reliability and at times bringing insights from the diverse marginalized community is a resource and also the time intensive process. And at times we bring the marginalized communities and other uh, power holders to, uh, together, duty bearers together in a platform, but there is so much of the norms of 
uh, not speaking when you uh, feel that someone senior is in your table. So you need additional efforts of breaking those harmful social norms and practices and breaking those structural barriers of discrimination so that marginalized communities can definitely speak their voices. Uh, however, some of the uh, achievements are we have um, uh, enable some of the marginalized com communities understand the importance of SDGs and also their role in achieving the SDG goals, uh, contributing to the localization of the SDGs. And we have also created a safe uh, place for the marginalized people who, where they can openly express themselves and also th that process also helped them to break the hierarchy to some extent. Marginalized committee and duty bearer in a common platform to develop this process of the SDG monitoring and also the making plan for achieving those uh, char uh, uh, targets have helped in understanding the community expectation and also understanding the challenges of the state uh, of the state on meeting those expectations and uh, definitely it has also re uh, reduced uh, it has also contributed in reducing the gender data gaps so uh, some of the way forward we also need to continue strengthening capacity of the marginalized community so that they are uh, able to raise their voices as contributors in data generation and uh, ensure that inclu uh, inclusivity is uh, one of the key aspects of our data work. And we also need to strengthen the capacity of more civil society actor so that they also provide emphasis in citizen data, data for pro poor people responsive planning and helping to understand the context with a diverse perspective for their effective influencing. We also need to strengthen accountability of government agencies to acknowledge citizen generated data for planning and policy reforms, along with standardization of the citizen generated data together with uh, all civil society organization. For, uh, for this, uh, we need the continued, continued efforts and influencing is uh, required. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, now over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shikhat. That that was a very interesting um, um, example of engagement uh, to monitor SDG progress. Um, very impressive. Um, now we have a few minutes for question and answer. Uh, I I do see one question in the in the chat that the question is: Do we mean the same thing when we say citizen generated data? In the very good presentations we have seen so far in in this uh, site event, I I would uh, turn over to the uh, to the presenters uh, if uh, if you can be concise and and uh, uh, as uh, you know to the point as possible. Uh, maybe I will start in the, the same order as the presentation. Uh, Yung Yi, do you have uh, a comment to this question? You are still muted. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. um, thank you, Wenyan. Yeah. This is a really good uh, question from Al. And, uh, thank you for the question. So I think we had a lot of debate on what is count as a citizen generated data. Uh, because there's a different level of involvement of citizen data. Um, but for uh, currently, for the purpose of developing the conceptual framework, we would like to focus on, on the uh, little bit narrow focus down for, for the practical reason of operationalizing this framework. We want to focus on, on the data produced by and with sufficient engagement of citizens communities, civil society organization, and other mm. actor at the design and or collection stage of the data process. So this is the, the current focus of the framework. And with more knowledge and case study from the country, we may expand um, the, this definition. But for now, I think uh, for this framework, I'm not saying we can define what the citizen data was not. Um, and we don't have the role, but it's for the implementation of the framework, we want to narrowly focus on at, at the beginning for this stage. 
Thank you, Yung Yi. I wonder if the other presenters uh, have uh, have some addition, or we can um, get more questions from from the participants. Uh, and Andres. Thank you. Yeah, I will just add uh, to that uh, really complete answer the importance that we uh, from Colombia see on uh, really being involved citizens. So it's hard to measure sometimes how involved people are, but uh, as we have these different understanding levels in the framework of levels of citizen participation, the stages of the data value change they can influence, and even the types of initiatives, I think the key concept to understand whether they, they're talking about the same is how involved society and citizens really are around, along the whole process uh, for us. I will just add that test. Thank you, Andres. Uh, I, I also see in the chat a request if the presenters can share their PPTs. Um, and so I, 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 I think I would leave that to action by the presenters. Uh, just if I may ask, um, a very um, active listener to this presentation. Uh, I, I I think that uh, the question itself, as well as the richness of the presentations we have heard today, in my mind, really uh, underscores the importance of having the uh, Copenhagen framework uh, developed and uh, 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 reviewed and endorsed by by data professionals, right? The statistic uh, commission, I think that, you know, this kind of framework is very important for, especially at the beginning, so that if we are, we are talking about the same thing, we are using, applying a certain standard of, of methodology, of definition and approaches and so on and so forth, that can uh, uh, can ensure some degree of, of um, uh, consistency, right? Uh, not only in terms of consistency in in the in the the are we are we doing the same thing? Uh, even to a uh, to some extent to ensure consistency in quality and later in terms of uh, uh, being able to compare or adding up, right? So we ensure that we are all uh, counting apples, <laughs> using the same methodology, taking the same approach. I think that, in my mind, that underscores the importance uh, of um, uh, um, developing and finalizing the Copenhagen framework uh, on this very important uh, topic. I don't see more uh, questions. Um, do you, do you, uh, Yong Yi or anybody uh, in in the in the back uh, see more questions? Um, um, there's a a, a a grace from Uganda shared uh, their experience, so it's oh. very valuable. Uh, I think the mic is uh is uh, turned on for everyone. If you want to speak for yourself, it's also possible. Okay. Yeah, if if um if people can can raise their hands or unmute themselves to uh, yeah, Grace, do you want to uh, speak yourself? Yeah, Grace, I think. Yes, please. Uh, I think she she raised her hand, but uh, let me just check. Hello, good Hi. evening everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm so excited <laughs> to hear from very many experiences. What we have done in Uganda is bits and pieces of what the presenters have shared. We have developed a citizen generated data toolkit. Actually, this toolkit uh, is mapped on a number of civil society agencies that we worked with, uh, uh, be, uh, aligning to what Columbia just presented in the mapping exercise. And now what we have done, we, we launched the toolkit and we have encouraged the civil society to become part of the NSO. We've integrated the civil society interventions in the NSDS, National uh, Statistical Development Strategy for Uganda, which we call the Plan for National Statistical Development. And now they've also started developing some strategic plans for statistics aligned to the NSDS. 
we have trained some of the civil society and we've been able to support them to compile a draft metadata, CGD data, me metadata based on the kind of data that they produce. And that is where we are. We have developed with them a capacity uh, improvement plan, which we are going to continue uh, engaging in terms of capacity development on methodology, on uh, harmonization, on concepts and definitions and terminology. And then we get to the actual data because now Uganda is supposed to report uh, the voluntary national review this year. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at this as a real opportunity to localize the SDGs, but also uh, generate more data and information to to report in the VNR. Thank you. Over. Thank you, Grace, for sharing this. It's a, it's a, yes, I, I, I mean, as a non-statistician, I also feel I'm very excited about this project and really look forward to hearing more uh, uh, about what, uh, you know, what, what's, what's happening. Uh, and, uh, you know, the least uh, that I, the, my excitement comes from the fact that uh, I see this as a very important uh, pathway for uh, empowering uh, uh, marginalized uh, uh, groups in society and to really promote social progress and, and, and social justice um, and and as um, j just uh, I don't see any questions or hands and I think time is also uh, we are also coming to the time that we we have so I'm just probably this will be my very short uh, concluding remarks and I, I really you know my personal excitement aside i think that uh, uh this uh, um uh, this side event has really been uh, very very interesting and very informative i i thank all the presenters uh you know what i take away from this uh, from this uh, um discussion is number one as i i said i really feel that the 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 importance of the developing copenhagen framework right to to kind of uh, standardize or, or to uh, to to create a framework for consistency and, and quality uh, assurance, and also I think that uh, you know to to connect with the national statistical authorities. I think this is a really you know very very exciting initiative. And also I um, I also learned from the presentations that uh, you know there are. Uh, you know, this is a, a while the the framework might be new efforts, a new initiative, but the the kind of uh, activity, this this kind of engagement is already happening uh, in um, you know at different levels, either at the directly at the community level to involve individuals, citizens to to report on on their own uh, realities to contribute to national monitoring. Um, and and also it can take place at some uh, kind of intermediate level, right? Through civil society organizations, uh, the um, the data are not necessarily generated by individual citizens, but they are generated uh, very close to to the citizens, and that you know through civil society organizations that are, are working uh, and servicing uh, those uh, more disadvantaged and marginalized groups, such as migrants, um, and. Um, um, uh, and I, I also uh, really um, uh, appreciate the um, the sense of uh, uh, involvement and engagement. And I, you know, I, I think on the one hand, uh, this is a, a very important initiative to to uh, collect data to fill data gaps. But at the same time, I think it's also uh, uh, another. A way to increase accountability, so those data can also be uh, 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 compared or, or or kind of um, uh, what's the the I don't know what's your professional jargon basically to compare with the official data to validate right 
and or to validate and to to identify gaps and 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 problems in in data. So I think this uh, really I can't say enough about you know how important uh, this initiative is. And then I also I I I think it's also very encouraging from the discussion that uh, uh, we uh, the um, engagement is there and uh, we uh, do have uh, lots of work to do. And uh, I very much, uh, I think I can speak for all the participants. We may very much look forward to hearing more about this initiative and uh, and all the best to to the pr practitioners who are doing the, the work and uh, uh, look forward to um, uh, the um, Copenhagen framework uh, being uh, uh, formalized, endorsed and, and, and uh, uh, to be used to to guide further work in in this area. So I, I thank all our parties, all our presenters uh, for um, especially for uh, for people who are from different time zones to be part of this uh, uh, event. And also I thank all the participants who uh, who logged in to um, to be part of this uh, engagement. I know uh, some of you, you know, lots of you probably didn't have the opportunity to um, uh, to speak up, but uh, I uh, I I really appreciate your presence being here, and thank you, and uh, have a good day, and carry on the good work that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wenya, and thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice event. Goodbye. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, nice you. to meet all of you. Bye bye. bye.